I quit my corporate job. Mentally, I'm exhausted and my mental health came into like a key factor as to why I quit. I knew something was wrong when I would take my vacations and then I would dread coming back to work the next day. Even though I was recently promoted to a software engineer manager, I still was not happy. I didn't like the corporate politics. It was giving house of cards and I'm tired of playing my chess moves just to try to move higher up in the company. Honestly, I wasn't passionate about the work I was doing every day. Even though this is very daunting, I'm very ambitious about my future. I'm gonna take one day at a time and figure it out, but I'll let you guys in on my journey. And again, we're seeing a lot of those themes that we went over with Gen Z values, like the politics, no movement forward, no passion. There is no passion, there is no vision, there is no aggression. They're just a little bit more willing to jump into the unknown than previous generations have. And if they see that they don't like where they currently are at, they're not afraid to just quit and see what happens, see where life takes them. I think people understand that mental health is above stressing yourself to death and getting sick because you don't like where you work. And in the end of the day, you're spending a lot of your life at the workplace. So you want to be happy. And that's just what Gen Z values. And honestly, a lot of younger people value. And I know like a lot of the older generation probably will think, are they being realistic? Are they making the right decision? Is this smart? And I don't think this is a decision that they're making lightly, as we'll see in this video that I'm about to play. Did I send it? Yeah. I'm so nervous. <laughs> joking right now. I'm so scared. This isn't funny. Like, it's not funny, but like, I laugh when I get nervous. You got hips end. Today's the day. About to resign from my position. I'm actually Five. shaking. Five. I'm actually gonna cry immediately when I turn this camera off. Should I just do it? Yeah. Oh my god, my stomach's so gonna drop. I just did it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Are you gonna? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. A lot of these videos are similar they're shaking they're about to cry they're taking this so seriously and it's a scary thing to do as someone that has also quit a job for the unknown before in my career i know that it's like a leap of faith type of thing and it's usually because you don't like where you're at you don't like what you're doing at the moment and the idea of being free of that feels better than staying somewhere that you're not happy so I okay so let's talk about that whole little thing we'll talk more we'll see a couple more scenes but i want to talk first about this so let's talk about the last part and we'll work our way back so being happy or quitting a corporate job and <laughs> that it looked like that individual was taking it seriously let's just be honest i'm gonna be honest i'm not trying to get on those people but to film it and to be like oh, oh my god i did it i did it it's kind of like I, I don't see that being taken seriously because if i was to do that same thing and quit my corporate job and I have no way to pay my bills anymore. I'm not going to be going, oh, guys, here we go. I'm going to be like, what the fuck? And I'm not going to record any of it. <laughs> you won't see that for weeks. And I'll come back and say, hey, guys, it was stupid. You know why I can say these things? Because I've done it. I've done the whole uh, quit my corporate job for a little bit to see how life goes. You know, I worked in the schooling system, so I got three months off sometimes. Sometimes I worked the second job, and sometimes I said, you know what? Let's see where life takes me. And, brother, I'm going to sit here and tell you. Listen. I understand the concept of not wanting to work a nine to five. I understand the concept of wanting to take a leap of faith. But what I think is happening a lot more is that honestly, and we're going to see a little, we're going to see a little bit more of a clip here, but I want to kind of branch this out before we do that. I think a lot of people are just afraid they're going to die early. I'm being honest. I don't think a lot of people think they're going to make it to 50, 60, 70, 80, and you very well may not. Um, but I can tell you, you know, when you, when you work, if you people have ever worked around the elderly, if you've ever worked at a hospice center, if you've ever worked at long-term care, if you've ever worked in assisted living or anything like that, or you've even been to those places, or you have grandparents who have been in there or great-grandparents, you know that <coughs> if you speak with these people, you may know that they did not want to make it this far. They didn't think they'd ever get into their 80s or 90s, and now they have to look back, and obviously some of them have successful lives, some of them didn't. But a lot, a lot of people don't think they're going to make it this far. I was talking the other day about how I didn't think I'd make it past 21. If you remember a famous song by Juice World in the song Legend, he talks about not making it past 21. Uh, or a lot of the people he was around didn't make it past 21. It's just a thing that I think is becoming more and more prevalent because we can see people in the news. We can see a lot more people out there who are who pass away. So we see it at such a big 
grand scale that we truly think that we're not going to make it that far. So I believe Gen Z is not necessarily being lazy or just not wanting to work or quit and so they quit these corporate jobs to go be a go be a barista at Starbucks because they truly don't see the future. They can't see themselves getting to 40 and 50. They rather, and this is in their head, because I could tell you as a man who's older now, I would rather go back and work much harder than I did. But you do get caught up in that I'm going to go for it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just know that you may fail. I think that should always be a thing. It should never, you should know when to cut your losses and be like it didn't work out. Go back into the corporate world, go back into the working world and go from there. Um, but I don't believe that this whole notion of being happy, because you're not going to be very happy if you're broke. Okay. I don't know a lot of people. I've not met a lot of people. I've not spoken to a lot of people that when they are making $20,000 a year working at their McDonald's flipping burgers, hey, no shade to McDonald's. Once again, I just use McDonald's because everybody globally knows what I'm talking about in that industry. But if you're working at your local McDonald's flipping burgers, okay, and you're making $20,000 a year, you may say all, you can say all you want about being happy, but when them bills come out, come out knocking, you are not going to be happy. $20,000 isn't a lot to do anything. You'll have a hard time just trying to pay your rent, let alone being able to try to pay your rent, pay your insurance, pay your health insurance, also trying to pay for any other expenses that happen. If your car breaks down, house maintenance, lawn maintenance, these things add up very quickly, even if you live in an apartment, even if you live in, <clears throat> if you're just renting out an apartment or a studio, it's hard to do this. I know we want to live in a world where money doesn't matter. We just want to throw money away and be like, ah, F money, work-life balance. No, it's just never going to work that way. Okay. We live in a world, if you want to go live in a world where money doesn't affect you at all, well, go, go. I mean, give up all your earthly possessions and go Live in a place where the bills ain't high, or you can do low income housing, or you can do that and live it, but don't complain. If you get to that point and you're you're living in a studio apartment that's got a microwave and don't even got an oven, got a microwave and a fridge, and be happy with it then. You'll be paying low money, you can work at whatever little job you like to work at and have fun with your friends, you ain't gonna have much money to do stuff, but if you can live a life of complete adventure, hiking, kayaking, stuff that don't cost a whole lot of money to go do, by all means, do it. People live in vans. People do the van life. If you can do that, do it. But don't come out. Don't start talking and, and being and start complaining about it and talk about, well, I wish I could be happy. I, I want to be happy and not work. And I want to people. Sometimes it can be very much. I want to be happy and be lazy and just do nothing else. And that's the problem I run into when it comes to the whole Gen Z thing. But it's not even Gen Z. It's just. It's an every generation thing. We all work with people who talk about how broke they are, but they don't want to work. You know what I'm saying? And I think we always go back to the excuse of the economy is tough. And I agree. The economy is tough. The inflation is tough. I'm not here to negate that. But the whole that argument has been going on since I was a child. It happened with the generation above me. It happened with the generation above that. Everybody doesn't like to work nine to five. Nobody wants to work 40 hours a week. It is part of life. It's, it's where we live. And like I said, if you don't want to do that and you don't want to work a nine to five, you want to just just hop on Instagram or whatever, be an influencer, or you just want to live the adventurous life, you can do it. Go do it. Go work at your McDonald's for six months out of the year. Save up all that money. You know, live on the streets or live in your van. And you can do it. You can do it. But to say that you want to live a life like somebody who, let's pick a profession everybody knows. If you want to live the life of somebody who's a cardiac surgeon, okay, but you also want to work like somebody who works at your local uh, grocery store, if you want to work those kind of hours, have that kind of work, but also make money or live the life of somebody who has gone to school for 12 years, you're never going to get that. And so I think that what everybody is trying to find is this world where everything just comes together beautifully. And what only thing I can say that, you know what Chris Moo would say to that? <laughs> that ain't never going to happen. So let's just let that old thing go. Agents account, a brokerage account, 401ks. These are all security. These are ways that you won't have to work when you're old. Because as much as people say, oh, you know, you can just clock in, get that overtime. Your body is going to get old at some point. All of our bodies are going to get old. Do you want to be working when you're 60? 70 80 a lot of the people who have this doomsday mentality like we don't know if we're gonna be here tomorrow these are the people that are living till they're 99 <laughs>
<laughs> and it's a blessing to live that long. But what I'm saying is imagine living till you're 99 and you are just financially unprepared. What is going to happen? Because I'm going to be honest, if it's me and I'm looking back on my life, even in my older age, and I'm like, I was just spending money because I didn't think I was going to make it this long. And, and I'm still here every day. I keep I just keep waking up. <laughs> I would just be thinking about all the stuff that I spent money on and I don't have anything to show for it. And I'm not able to clock in at a job because I'm too old. But by then it's too late to really do anything about it because how am I going to work for money? And this is why you have to work now and put the stuff in place when you can, when you're young, when you're physically able to set yourself up for those later years. What if you want to retire by 50? What if you want to retire by 40? Because there are people who do it. And a lot of the time, they're not living the lifestyle of a lot of people who want to live in the now. They're living below their means and all of their money is going into how it can be passive and to make them more money. And then when they're not working by 50, they will get questions from people like, how did you do it? What did you do? We all have the same choice of what we can do with our money. I'm not saying we all have the same amount, but I'm saying that we have a choice with how we spend our money. For people who are able-bodied, who aren't battling any mental, physical capabilities or anything like that, if you are able to go out and get more income streams and you just don't want to, not because the job market's bad, Bad because I know it's bad. I'm saying if you just don't want to do certain things, then I mean, you're just going to be where you're going to be because there's going to be people who are going to go above and beyond because that's the sacrifice that it's going to take. And another thing related to that comment is when we talk about spending comfortably, sometimes spending comfortably again means you're living above your means. Listen, it's better to just do it now. Listen, we can all day every day just like option was saying he's gonna work hard now so he can have money to do his art guys i work too i work so i can do this because if i don't work guess what i'm not doing this like all this stuff you see around me i would be sitting in a in a room in a closet trying to film this stuff and i wouldn't have no live stream because there would be no wi-fi there'd be no internet there'd be nothing i would have my lights on and that'd be it and then those are going to get cut off at some point so why not do the work now see now i'm not speaking from a place of oh this is what i did no, I'm the same. I'm just like what Simone said. I was living my life as if I was going to die soon. You just, it's so hard to fathom getting to your 40s and 50s. I, I mean, we all think that it's, it's not like we don't think we think we're just going to die randomly. It's just that you can't, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to fathom getting this far in life. Let me make sure I have this right here so I can see. And so it's just it's just so hard to let these things go. And now I want to say this as far as um, not putting money back. And I want to say one more thing. She mentioned that there are some people who are always going to go above and beyond. Listen, if you work at any job, if you work in the corporate world at all, or if you work in, like I said, different kind of system, maybe not necessarily corporate, maybe more blue collar, doesn't matter. There is going to be somebody who's willing to do the work. For you guys who get out there and say, well, I'm not going to work the overtime. I'm not going to do all that because that's just the man. I agree. I agree. I'm not saying go work overtime to make yourself feel look better in the man's eyes. I'm not saying to do that at all. Okay? But what I am saying, though, is if you want to get further in life a little quicker, do it while you can if you can work the overtime, because if you ain't, because what a lot of y'all aren't doing, and I'll include myself in this, I realize when I'm not working, like if I wasn't doing this YouTube shit, guys, I'd probably be sitting around scrolling on my phone. So I need to be working those 60 hours. And I still want to work 60 hours. But that way, when my days do come off and stuff like this, I, I replace that time with this so I can really get sit, back, sit back and enjoy it. But a lot of you guys say, oh, I don't want to work 40 hours a week. I want to work 20 and make the same money as if I was working 40. And in those extra hours that you got all weekend or you got when you get home, you guys don't do anything. You sit at home, you scroll on your phone, watch a few videos about being rich or making money passively, or you go watch some person who sells a course to you or somebody who tells you, hey, this is how I made a million dollars and all I do is run a spa and I work seven seconds a day. Listen, that stuff ain't never gonna work, guys. And it's just never gonna work. There are going to be people who will be willing to go above and beyond way past than what you're willing to do. And you cannot get mad at a guy who says, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to work 70 to 80 hours a week. I'm going to go as long as I can. And those guys go two, three, four, five, six years. 
Next thing you know, they got a nice little house. They got a nice little car. Got a nice little family. And he living good. And that extra money that he was using from overtime. See, this is where a lot of people get it wrong, too. I'll include myself. When you work overtime or you work for that extra money, even if you're getting extra money from YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, what a lot of people do is use that money and they incorporate it into their life. No. You need to take whatever your base pay is, okay? If you're a person who goes to a nine to five, take that. Take your base pay. Any extra 40 hours that you work, any if you get up to 60, 70 hours, all that overtime money, take that money and invest it, save it, do something. Because you never want to live off of overtime money. Because if you've worked in overtime life, I've worked in overtime life, overtime goes away. At some point, the companies are going to get tired of paying that overtime, and they're either going to hire new people or they're going to stop it and put a freeze on it for a little bit. It happens everywhere you go. So, yeah, overtime it normally doesn't happen all year long. Normally, overtime will happen for like two, three, four months. You can maybe get it really good, and then it, it, you go into freeze mode where you don't get it two, three more months. That overtime is gone, and then it comes back, and then it goes, and then it comes back. I, I've made the mistake of trying to live off of overtime, and when that money goes away, next thing you know, you're trying to still live that same lifestyle, and you can't, and those bills catch up to you. So when you do work overtime and all that kind of stuff, take that money aside and go put it into something. Investing, brokerage for your 401k. And if you don't work a corporate job, you can still do the investments in the brokerage. You can still do all that stuff. Okay. Once I learn more about that stuff, I'll do more education. But I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I would highly suggest watching social Simone for that kind of stuff. She seems to know what she's talking about when it comes to those things. But yeah, guys, just work now. Just do the hard work now. While you're still able to work. Because the last thing you want to do is be like, wow, I lived my life. It was so fun. And in your 30s and 40s, you got kids now and all that's dead. And then you get to your 50s and 60s and you're broke as hell. Because you spent all your time when you were young doing stuff. By the time you get to your 30s and 50s, you spent all your money. You didn't have any skills or anything. So you had to go get a regular job. They didn't pay enough. And now you're struggling because you got kids as well. And then you get to your 50s and 60s, and now you got to get a reverse mortgage on your house just to survive because you can't work overtime no more. You can't do any of this stuff because you're your body has broken down because you've been working your ass off for the last 20 years to make up for the first 10 years that you were fucking up. You don't want that. So put in the work now. I've had to make this decision. You think I want to work 60 hours a week all the time, 70 hours a week? Yes, I do. I want to work my 60, 70 hours a week, but I'm being honest with you. I'd rather work my regular shifts at work and put in the extra 30, 40 hours here doing YouTube stuff, doing that. But that's not the life that I live. I made a lot of mistakes. So I got to hit up those 60, 70 hours that because I need to, my 60 to 70 hours has to go to money. I can't put 60 to 70 hours into YouTube and they're not paying me like I would be at work. That's just dumb. Don't do that. I don't care how passionate you are about something. Do not put all your time and money or all your time into it. If it's not paying you no money, that's foolish. Do the thing that's making you money, and then when this starts to make you money, you're probably going to have to you know, put in 100-hour weeks. I'm sorry. It is what it is. But when this starts making you money and can replace the income of the money you used to make at work, then you put all your time into this. But the money has to make sense. Now, sometimes you may have to downgrade a little bit. That's why I say don't live a lavish lifestyle. Live below your means. That way, if you ever make the switch to like option says to maybe go to art or somebody wants to go to social media, once you can make that change... It'll be simple, baby. You can live off of $30,000 a year because you got $60,000, $70,000, $80,000, $100,000 saved up. And a lot of that money is in investments and it's still making you money on top. And you can start to use the money you're making from this. Like I said, if you're making $60,000 from YouTube, live off of thirty, dollars And then, baby, money can keep going. Anyway, let's watch this one last clip. Head of HR gave their reasoning, saying, In our organization, the Gen Zs I have interacted with can be exhausting because of their lack of discipline, and they like to challenge you. They think they're better than you, smarter than you, more capable than you, and they will tell you to your face. I just got home from a job interview, and they said that I'm not going to get it because I wasn't dressed appropriately for the interview. I'm giving business in my little sex skirt. And wait, look at my <laughs> Anyways, the skirt is thrifted, 
and the top is for mixed fashion. Now, despite this being pretty incriminating evidence, Gen Z hasn't always had this reputation. Up until a few years ago, the work ethic news was positive for Gen Z. After declining from boomers to millennials, work ethic made a comeback among Gen Z in the 2010s, until it didn't. The number of 18-year-olds who said they wanted to do their best in their job, even if it sometimes means working overtime, suddenly plummeted in 2021 and 2022. In early 2020, 54% of 18-year-olds said that they were willing to work overtime. By 2022, it was only 36%. Now, the reason I left this section till- All right, so that one was gonna be short because there's a lot, there's actually a lot I wanna talk about in that entire thing. So, starting with the first part, with them wanting to challenge you. You know there was a trend going on and it kinda still happens every now and then, but y'all see those animations and um, I don't watch those animations, I try not to get into them anymore, um, because I recently just found out that animations are actually stealing content from other content creators. So if you see those animations, just click and be like, oh, I recognize the voice and see if you can't go find the original content creator and go support them because these animations, even though they are putting in some work, they are doing the animations. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to do animations, but they are stealing the script in the idea and I don't think that's right. So anyway, but you'll see these animations rolling around about living in the corporate world and how you should, um, how you should talk to your managers. And I want to say this, guys. <laughs> I'll give you a quick example. If a manager was to come up to you and ask you to stay late, you have every right to say no. But if you think in the world, in the corporate world, where is, there is a good old boys club sometimes, okay? If you think you can just walk into the corporate world and say, no, I'm not gonna do anything extra and think that you're gonna still get promoted, you might as well go ahead and let that go. See, that's my problem. I don't care. I've worked with people who say, I'm working my 40 hours, I'm working my 35 hours, I'm working my 30 hours, and I'm gone! Don't ask me for an extra minute. I've been a supervisor, I work. I, I supervise employees who said they ain't working a second hour, a second over, and I'm fine with that. That's fine. But, I, but, in, but you knew those weren't going to be the people who are going to get promoted. The people who don't put in any extra work, and I'm not talking about just extra time, like working over, because sometimes if you work for, let's say you work for a bank, it closes at five. There ain't going to be no extra work to do. After five, you're gone. You know, you do you do your extra work and you're out of there. But if you ever want to get promoted in most places, you're going to have to show at least some extra initiative. You know, when I got, when I was promoted to supervisor, I was working not off the clock, but I would show up to work early, have conversations with the managers. I would always try to get as many information as I could. I was always studying the material. I was trying to be the best damn worker I could be. But it's not because it's like I'm trying to slave away for the man. It's not like that, guys. It's more about, hey, you know what? I'm putting in the extra work because I want to be the best employee I can be. So even if this job doesn't work out, I still got the work ethic that will probably move me along in life. See, what I think Gen Z, uh, and, I, and I keep saying Gen Z, but that's who we're talking about. But I believe this with a lot of people. But if you think you're the type of person that your life is just going to happen for you, if you don't put in any extra work, Sorry about the camera, it freezes up sometimes. If you don't put in any extra work that it's just going to happen for you, you're going to get promoted because you have a nice smile. That's where people get it fucked up. People do the same thing. Listen, I've been doing YouTube for seven years. I can speak from experience. Just because I can get on here and talk and smile and joke and laugh, does that mean I'm going to have 100,000 subscribers? No, absolutely not. I do this because I enjoy it, but I could, do, I could be much better. And I'll even admit this. That way you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. Every time I've gotten close to YouTube and I started to see growth, I leave. I'm being honest with you. Every time I start to see growth, I leave. Because there is a part of me that realizes how much work I'm putting in now. Damn, I'm going to have to do this forever in order for me to really see growth. I'm going to really have to put in the hours. And the problem is it's super hard to do that with YouTube because there's no money that comes with it first. So I would have to be putting in, at one point I was putting in 100 hour weeks here on YouTube and it was, I wasn't really getting compensated for it because there is a little bit of luck and there's a lot of hard work, but something has to kind of get the spark going. And so every time I saw growth, it was like, fuck, 100 hours for 30 subscribers? That's, that's a lot of work. So I would always just be like, nah, I'm going back to work. I ain't gonna lie to you. I would get right back into working overtime and get right back into working at my corporate job because it's a lot. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time to get to this mental space. And I say this every time, so I don't want to keep repeating myself. But this is probably the best I've been 
able to finally now feel like I can actually do YouTube for real, for real. And actually put the work in and be able to see the growth. Because it's hard. It's hard to put in this much work and see a little coming back. And it's the same thing that happens in the corporate world. It's hard to work at a job for three, four, five years. And you just get promoted in year two. And it takes you another two years to get promoted. And then it takes you maybe five years from there to get promoted. And it takes next thing you know, it's been 10, 15 years. And you're just now becoming executive or something like that. Nobody wants to think that way. People want to go, oh, I'm a cashier. All right, now I'm lead cashier. Okay, now I'm assistant manager. All right, now I'm manager. Now I'm regional manager. Now I'm the area manager. Okay, now I'm the um, one of the executives. Oh, now I'm VP. Now I'm the president of this. It's like, bro, if you think that's how it goes, and people want that done in five years. And I think that's a, a lot of the reasons also why Gen Z challenges their managers, tells them this is how it's going to go, because they believe that they are smarter. We all do it when we're young. They believe they are smarter and they think they have the way. And it's really hard because we have social media in your face. And you have to watch people who don't work a traditional 9 to 5 be more successful than you. And what you guys don't understand, and I want you to make sure you really understand this. Are there some content creators who put in low effort and they get big returns? Yes. Okay, there is. But the vast majority of content creators that you see who have... 100 plus 100,000 subscribers or even have 30,000 subscribers those people put in work because they have to do the research they have to get the TikToks, they have to get the the other youtubes or they have to redo the research on their own if they're like a business channel or if they're a tech channel it may take them 50 to 60 hours a week to see that one video you are looking at because they got to come up with the idea they got to come up with the script they got to come up with the editing they got to do it all for themselves and they may still be working a job so don't hate on the people who are doing successful on YouTube, but to think that it doesn't take any effort or any job or any work and you can just do it. That's what people get confused. And another thing about YouTube, and I'm going to give you some numbers here in a second. First of all, the vast majority of YouTubers will never get past 1,000 subscribers. You Getting past 10,000 subscribers, I think, is 1%. Getting to the 100,000 to the million, you're, you're, that's 0.00. I did the math before, but it's like 0.00235%. Or people are ever going to see 100,000 subscribers. So to think that it's just something that happens to everybody because you see it on a grand scale. You don't know how many. There's thirty. There's over 39 million channels on YouTube. The vast majority of them will never even get to 1,000 or 10,000 or even, even sniff 100,000. So when you see this, know that a lot of effort got put into it. Now, some people, they get lucky. Some people, they get a video and it blows up, right? And they get like four or five Six videos that do that and it pushes them into another space. But what y'all don't understand is behind the scenes about the money part of it is you get paid per thousand views. So just because you have 100,000 subscribers does not mean you're getting paid the same as somebody else who has 100,000 subscribers. Views and watch times matter. And I want to say this, just because somebody has 2 million subscribers doesn't mean that the guy who has 100,000 subscribers isn't making money. It has all come down to watch time, engagement, and views, man. Because somebody who's got 100,000 subscribers could be making just as much as somebody who has a million. But you got somebody who has a million subscribers barely making more than a person who has 50. I've seen the numbers, guys. But here's one thing I want to give you. I was watching something the other day. I'm really trying to speak to you Gen Z people who think that there's no work that's ever going to have to be involved. I was watching the video today, actually. Somebody was talking about how much money they get paid. They got a video that got 12 million views. 12 million. That's a lot, wouldn't you say? That you know how much you know how much money that video made though, eleven hundred dollars. Now for you guys, eleven hundred dollars that's a lot, especially for a, a YouTube short or a TikTok, because that's where everybody thinks they're gonna make their money from. Eleven hundred dollars, that yeah, yes, great. But the vast majority of videos you're gonna make aren't gonna get to twelve million. They're probably not even gonna get to a million. So imagine you only get a video that gets a hundred thousand views. You're talking about a fraction of $1,100. You're probably talking more about $50 to $100. Okay? And you got to come up with the idea. And you got to come up with the script. How many videos are you going to put out a day, huh? If you make YouTube shorts, what are you going to do? Put out 1,000 shorts a day? 1,000 shorts a month? Go ahead. I want to see if you can even put out 100 shorts in a month. And they all have to be somewhat creative. Because the vast majority, if they're not creative, the vast majority of them are going to get zero views. If you're a YouTuber... I want you, if you really think you can do it, go ahead and make 100 videos in 100 days. Do it. I've done 100 live streams in 100 days. I've made 900 videos in 100 days before. Believe it or not. 
Okay, no one on this channel, but I've done 900 videos in 100 days. And you know how many subscribers I got out of all that? I think I got 1,200 subscribers out of all that. I ended that channel with 9,000 subscribers. Guys, it takes a lot of fucking work because it's not just about just blowing up people with thousands of videos. Every video has to be great or at least close to it. And you get, some people just ain't never going to come back. It's just a, you have to really build a core audience and do this shit. It's hard. It's always going to be hard. So for my people who are Gen Z who say they just want to be happy and they want to live life, go for it. But don't bitch and complain and moan for the person who's like, fuck happiness, I need money. Don't get mad at the guy or the girl who does that, who says, you know what, uh-uh, I'll put in my 60 hours, I'm only 23, hey, fuck it, I'm going to put my head down, I'm just going to grind it out. And then get mad at them when they're 35 living a good life. Okay? And then you're 35 and you just barely scraping. You, you're still a uh, secretary at some <laughs> low... <laughs> you're a secretary working at this place that has five employees. Okay? Don't get mad at them or you're working at a call center. Okay? And you're making $14 an hour. Maybe that's not even $40,000 a year. That's not even 30 So for you people who think that and just get mad at those people who want to keep working, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And also, for the people who only work 30 hours a week, but you spend the other 40 hours of your life doing YouTube or you're a Twitch streamer or something, don't get mad at those people either. Because if they're willing to put in 70, 80 hours a week working their full-time job, which is and where I live is only over 30 hours, but they're also doing eight-hour streams on their day off, and they're doing that for two, three, four, five years, and then you get mad at them because you're like, oh my God, all you do is stream. You don't do any fucking work. It's like you weren't there when they were putting in eight-hour days. You weren't there when they were putting eight-hour days on Twitch, and they weren't seeing any return, and they didn't see anything for like two years, and then finally somebody catches them. Finally, the, the people start to come in. Finally, it starts to happen for them because they've been battling for years to have to pass up the other 100,000 streamers that they got to pass up, and now you're pissed off at them. See, I just don't get it. Everybody, and this is not just Gen Z. This is millennials. This is all the way up to boomers. This is me. Uh, we all get pissed off at people that we think that did it easy. We get pissed off at basketball players. We get pissed off at football players. We get pissed off at streamers. We get pissed. We get pissed off at doctors. We get pissed off at pissed off at nurses, lawyers. We get pissed off at the guy who's the executive of the company. We get people. Who, we get pissed off at business owners. We get pissed off at the person who owns the floor, the flower shop down the street. We get pissed off at the person who works at Walmart and they just happen to be a manager. You get pissed off at anybody who puts in any extra time, and just because you're broke. You're just like, well, if it was me, I mean, if I, I'm, if I if I got on a mic and started singing like Taylor Swift, I'd be making it. Listen, well, and I understand in some areas, especially when it comes to entertainment, some of it is manufactured. But the vast majority of you people that you meet in your normal life normally work hard for what they do. OK, people are always going to get mad at you. I remember when people used to get mad at me and I, I, I'm pissed off at myself because I didn't keep up this work ethic. I got lazy at some point, and now I'm back on it. And then I was really, I mean, I've been gone for eight months. Now I'm back, really pushing it again. It does get exhausting. It does get hard to keep putting in this many hours. And the, the problem that I did is I never took a break. I did that for like two to three years. I just those, just grinding it out. And I should have taken those breaks. Now, here's something I want to talk about for the Gen Z people that I think they get right. I'm not, there is no work-life balance. I disagree that there's ever going to be a work-life balance. If you want to be a successful person as far as monetarily, there's no work-life balance. You're gonna, something's going to have to take precedence over the other. Just is what it is. Either you want to have a life or you want to work. You can't, there's no work-life balance for somebody who's trying to be in that six-figure or more range. Okay, There is no work-life balance. Okay, It's just not. However, the mental health part of it. It's something I think Gen Z has got right. Because in my, I feel like for us millennials, we just skipped over the mental health part and thought we were just supposed to grind until we broke. And the problem is when you break, you think that you're only going to break for a couple months. You think you're going to be able to snap back. No. When you break, you break bad. When you have a mental breakdown because you don't deal with a lot of shit. I remember I did it. Dude, it'll, it'll take you up the game for six, seven months. Before you can get back to that grind like you once did had. 
So one thing I would highly suggest, and this is what something I'll do, don't ever under promise over deliver. I would always get on here and be like, all right, guys, we're going to go for a year straight streaming every day for the next year. No. You get on here and say, hey, guys, we're going to give it our best this year. Hey, fuck it. We're going to do all we can. And that means if you stream for three, four, five months and you're on it, and you're like, hey, guys, I'm taking a two-week break. I just need to get my head together. Here's what you should do, especially if you're a streamer, such as myself, because you're going to lose people after that part. Go ahead and create content for when you take that two-week layoff. Okay? Create the content while you do that two-week layoff. Okay? Matter of fact, you can just keep yourself off camera completely. You can live stream content you've already made. Okay? Just make every... Don't lie to people. Make everybody aware of it and be like, Hey, guys, this is not actually live. I'm playing a pre-recorded video. And then do it that way. We, I've seen that with... A person I admire, Candace Owens. When she goes on vacation, she already has two weeks of videos ready to go. If she knows she's going to be gone, she's already created the content. That's what you got to do. So when you take these two-week breaks, if you're a Twitch streamer, yes, just go ahead and put up pre-recorded videos that are, and then say, hey, guys, this is pre-recorded. Just letting you know. But here's my thoughts on this kind of stuff. And put up a two, three-hour stream of you doing stuff, but you're just really by yourself. It is what it is. Do what you got to do. But just let everybody know. And that's what I do. I try to... I pre-record a lot of stuff. And I didn't do that in the past. When you guys saw me uploading three videos a day, those were every day. I was literally making videos. I was uploading 15 videos a week every day like a fool. No. I should have took those 15 videos and said, all right, fuck it. I'm going on a two-week vacation. I need a break. Bam. I would have videos ready to go. But anyway... I don't know how long I've been talking, but uh, hopefully that was a good, good, good amount of a video. But uh, yeah, that's how I feel about Gen Z. I don't think they got everything wrong. But my main points are: if you wanna, if you wanna succeed and get further than the average person, you're gonna have to work harder than the average person. If you wanna have a work-life balance, that's you can have that, but you're gonna be average. It just is what it is. If you're okay with that, fucking go do it. Number three, don't bitch and complain for the people who are working harder than you. And number four, if you think you're going to make doctor money, if you think if you're going to make money like a cardiac surgeon and work like a Walmart cashier, you're going to be screwing yourself over. Focus on your mental health, but don't complain. Just live life. I understand working for the man sucks, but you ain't got to do it forever. If you play your cards right, you can be out of this game in 20 years instead of being in this game for 40 now, y'all think, oh, damn, 20 years? Motherfucker, trust me. By the time you get to 45, you'll be able to breathe. The last thing you do is want to get to 45 and you're still working your ass off because you have to. It's different if you work your ass off because you like to work. But you don't want to get to 45 and still be struggling to take care of your children. Get to 45 and be like, whoo, put in my work. Now I can sit back I st and still work, but you have money that's coming in a little bit more passively. You've got money saved up. And now you can work and breathe a little bit. And then you can really go into your hobbies or something you're a little bit more passionate about because you spent the last 20 years getting experience, getting skills, and people will pay for that. If you're somebody who's like a nurse for 20 years, a doctor for 20 years, you worked in contracting for 20 years, you worked as a you worked in the fast food restaurant for 20 years, especially if you were upper management and stuff like that, guys, that stuff is is valuable. If you have 20 years of experience in a certain field, you can give that and people will watch and people will engage with that because you're not just talking shit. You're not just saying, oh, well, you know, I think that if you wanted to No, you're saying, I know from 20 years of being in that industry, I can tell you this is how kids are. I can tell you this is how schooling is. I can tell you this is how it is to be a supervisor. I can tell you this is how it is working in the medical field. That's just important. Anyway, that's all.